All right, here we go. Wasting away in Uzbekistan. Take one. Hopefully, I won't mess up. <laughs> we knew there was stuff in the ground. We just didn't know it was toxic. I think everyone was exposed to, to some sort of radiation. There was a lot of dust, pools with stagnant water. Water, standing water, the signs that talked about the radioactive material and stay away. Don't get me wrong, the mission was great. I wouldn't trade my team for anything. But the place itself, the mud, the rain, the, the smell, the contamination, it's the most miserable place I've ever been. Now, years later, it's, it's eye-opening on how many other forms of cancers people are coming down with. And they were all stationed at K2. Just a moment, we've got an explosion inside. Pause there for just a moment. Okay, the whole building just exploded some more, the whole top part. Okay. The building's still intact, people are running up the street. In the weeks right after the 9-11 attacks, the U.S. needed a place to send its forces to be able to strike Taliban positions in Afghanistan. K2, or Karshi Khanabad, in Uzbekistan, was one of the closest bases to be able to send troops, aircraft, supply, airstrike, into Afghanistan and hit Taliban units. There's a hundred of us that went in that first route to build a base. When we were there digging, we always get such a bad headache. It smelled like gasoline and diesels and just other chemical mixed in. All of us just about suffered from constant diarrhea. Those guys that were deployed in Afghanistan didn't have those same effects. It was just those of us who were up at K2. The Pentagon knew just how serious this was as of November 2001. This intelligence report found that ground contamination at K2 airfield did pose a health risk to the U.S. forces deployed there. They found four contaminants at the airfield, the worst of which was likely a chemical weapons decontamination site. They don't know what it was cleaning up, but they know it was bad enough that it took eight months to clean it up. That stuff was in the soil too. The Defense Department will say they acted quickly, and while they did find dirt contaminated with asbestos and low-level radioactive processed uranium, they said the exposure to radiation was low if service members were wearing protective gear. Not at all. There was no protective equipment passed out or recommended for use. They also covered areas of radioactive soil and asbestos with a thick layer of clean dirt to keep people safe. Any layer of clean dirt, that would have washed away with rain and wind and other types of erosion. Then actually revealing the chemically and radiation contaminated soil underneath. When it rains, that base, it gets so muddy and everything gets so slushy. I can definitely say that just by being there, by walking on that base, you definitely get that contaminant everywhere. After a while, you start hearing about people getting sick and, you know, you start noticing weird things in your body. I went to the VA and got my blood and urine tested and it came back that I do have low levels of depleted uranium in my system. Seeing many of my friends and colleagues coming down with cancer, it's like there's a loaded gun aimed at us and we just don't know when the trigger's gonna be pulled. I had a physical 10 years after I had returned from K2 and they determined that I was hyperthyroid. My endocrinologist, after further research, determined that my thyroid needed to be removed. And after they removed it and ran a biopsy on the thyroid, they found several nodules that were cancerous. Yeah. I know, pretty cool. Huh? I did submit a claim to the VA for some type of rating and they rated me at 0%. My, my endocrinologist wrote a letter and I did resubmit my claim with this letter as an attachment. 
I got denied a claim for this as well. Based on how many K2 veterans came forward and the documents we were seeing, it was really surprising to me when the VA came back and told us the premise of your story is false. There isn't a higher incidence rate of cancer of the men and women that were at K2. What makes me angry is that our government, the people whose backs we had, now don't have our backs. They're continually denying uh, they're continually backtracking, and they're continually being unsupportive. And that's maddening. We, we kind of make a joke. Man, as soon as you retire, you die. You know, a couple years after you retire or sooner, things falls apart, and then you find out you got cancer, and then you pass away. In our document review, we got this heartbreaking letter written by a K2 veteran, Jeff Skinner. He was begging the Army to release some of the classified documents about K2 so that he could convince the VA to cover his care. Quote, even with all of this evidence, the VA still continues to deny my claim. I am desperate. I didn't want to endanger my career or reputation by contacting you. However, desperate times require desperate measures.